So thank you for joining us for a, a weekend preview. It looks like it's going to be an excellent weekend of action in the UK and in Ireland. I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Tor Ambassador Danny Mullins, who's fresh from Grade 1 victory last weekend on, on Statue Air. How good a, a feeling was that, Danny? That was fantastic. You know, she was... She was very good. She was tough. And riding grade one winners is what it's all about. Uh, you know, we're, we're lucky enough to be a purple patch of racing now for the next few weeks. Uh, all jumps racing fans uh, couldn't but be excited with what's to come. Definitely. And it's, it's a big weekend in the UK and Ireland, like you say. And don't forget for, for people who are, are betting with the talk this weekend, if you're going racing at Aintree, Chepstow, Sandown, whether it be all Wolverhampton on Saturday, Talk Guarantee is now available on course as well as on talk.co.uk. So that means we'll pay at least SP on win bets. And if the Talk dividend is greater, we'll pay out at that price as well. So hopefully Danny can help us out with some selections. So, so let's get straight into it, Danny. We'll start with the Tingle Creek. Obviously, it's Saturday's 10 to follow bonus race. Uh, you've got Chak and Poissoir in your stable. And uh, I imagine you wouldn't have minded getting the ride off Patrick on this one. Yeah, you know, Patrick's the, the lucky one getting the leg across, uh, you know, Shaq and he looks great at home and, you know, Sandown, Tingle Creek, it's a race that's produced, you know, some fantastic finishes through the year and I think this year will be no change. I'd say Shaq and Pursois is definitely the best horse in the race, but he just hasn't got that fitness edge that the likes of, you know, Nube Negra has, you know, he, he was good the last day, well beaten behind him in Punchestown, but this is going to be quite competitive. I still think Shaq and Pursois is going to win, but you wouldn't rule any of the others out of it. You know, Captain Guinness probably has to improve. Hitman, maybe the same. Grenatine is there for, you know, people are having on the radar for beating Altior, but was that a shadow of the old Art Altior? I think Nube Negra could be the one to put it up to Shaq and Pursois, but his class is really going to tell. And even if Shaq and Pursois is £10 below his best, I think he's good enough to beat him. Definitely. Obviously, at Cheltenham at the festival in the champion chase, Nube Negra just finished just ahead of Shaq and Pursois, but you think the, the flatter track will suit Shaq and no, I think that was a falsely run champion chase in Cheltenham last year. The cha the race changed its whole complexion when Politolog was a very late non-runner. He was the strong pace angle in the race. And you seen how keen Shaq and Pursois was that day. Go back and have a look at his Punchestown win where he was let stride and gallop along himself and Alaho really went at it from a long way out and they just annihilated some good horses. Nube Negra was a long way behind that day in Punchestown. And, you know, I think you're going to see Punchestown tactics maybe implied more so with Czech and Pursois. That's what seems to have him at his best. Excellent. It's going to be a, a really interesting renewal. And also, uh, Willie obviously sends ones across to Aintree as well. LMA, who goes in the, uh, the mayor's chase that's rearranged from Carlisle. Uh, four runners in that race. Annie Mack is obviously a decent contender, uh, but I imagine you'll be expecting Ali May to go well here. Yeah, you'd like to think Ellie May is going to be good enough, you know, to win it. Uh, Annie Mack, she's she's a proper decent mare on her in her own right as well. But uh, Ellie May, you know, she was just a was at a half length behind Col Reevy last year at. Uh, Cheltenham and won nicely in Fairy House. She was put away for the season after that. I think it's a nice opportunity for her to come back here. Um, Eleanor Bob is the other runner for Venetia Williams uh, and Zambella for Nigel Twiston Davis, but I think Ellie May is going to be good enough. The only slight concern is that Willie's horses haven't really hit top gear yet. He, maybe in the last three weeks he's only operating at a 17% strike rate but that's more so to do with the rain not coming and all of these good horses are really only being produced this weekend uh, I think from, from here until Christmas you're really going to see Willie's ones hitting top gear Definitely, could have a different strike rate percentage come Monday morning, that's for sure uh, Just st sticking with Aintree Many Clouds Chase as well looks a nice race Tiger Roll is the Irish Open in this. What do you make of him running in the race like this? Obviously, he likes Aintree, but more the, the national fences. Yeah, Tiger Roll, you know, he's he's a people's favourite. Uh, I'd love to see him run a big race in it, but 
couldn't have him. I don't, don't think he he's a is a betting prospect. Uh, you know, while he's getting on in years, he's eleven rise and twelve. It'll be interesting to see how he goes. All eyes will probably be on him as he possibly makes a bid back towards Aintree. And I think it's been noted that they're going to have a go at the cross country race in Cheltenham before that. So. I'd be watching Tiger roll with a view to the future rather than him being competitive in the Manny Clouds chase. Uh, I think Protectorat is you know, a proper decent horse. He, he won around entry last year. Native River, you know, it's a, a six-year-old in Protectorat versus an 11-year-old with Native River. He's very solid. Uh, Tizard's horses are in great form, but I think he's just getting on a little bit for me. Imperial Aura, there's always a horse with you know loads of ability, but he just has seems to have a lot more letters than numbers beside his name. So I have a question mark over him as well. I think Protector Rat here for Dan Skelton. Bridget Andrews takes the ride here. I think she's the one that's uh, going to take the beating in the many clouds for me. Yeah, definitely looks like a horse still on the on the upgrade. Uh, just on the national fences, obviously we see them in action this Saturday. The Beach of Chase. There's a few Irish runners that come across. Chris's Dream for Henry de Bromhead. Noel Mead has two at Permise and Snow Falcon in there in Ravenhill. For Gordon Elliott, do you think any of them can get involved at the business end? Yeah, it's a tricky one. Uh, the one I like in the race is Charlie Longson's mare, Snow Leopardess. Yeah, she, I've seen a video of her school and she seems to jump very well. And, you know, she, she's always been a mare that's, that's promised a little bit more than she's delivered. I think with that said, she could potentially be well handicapped. She won She won in Bangor a few weeks ago. She's going to be fit and well. I think she's a mare, you know, off America, 135. Is, she won the last day off 135. She's a little bit under the radar. And that's the one I'd, I'd like to be on here. Yeah, winner at the uh, at the tort race day at Bangor as well a few weeks ago. So hopefully uh, that can go well. And then on to, to Navin on Saturday, you've got a... A book of really nice rides. I'll start with it with the first race, the maiden hurdle. What do you want? It looks like to have a favourite chance there. So I imagine you'll be expecting a big run. Yeah, definitely. What do you want was very good winning first time out. And while he was beaten quite a distance at the Dublin Festival, two very good horses in front of him was at um, Kill Crush and I'm just getting it up here now. Um, yes, Kilcrutton, let's be clear about it. And he's beaten 12 and 9, 21 lengths that day, but uh, that's as good a bumper form as you could get, really. And, you know, he's a nose in front of Chemical Energy, who's won a maiden hurdle, and he ran, I think, that he win last weekend as well again. So, you know, he's quite solid. The step up to two and a half miles for what you want will definitely be a positive. All the rain that falls will help. Definitely. Sounds like a good chance then. The, the second division of that race too, Diamond in the Mud. He's been consistent in bumpers without a win, but makes his hurdle debut uh, on Saturday. Yeah, makes his hurdle debut. Very disappointing the last day in Clonmel and probably needs to bounce back a little bit from that. Uh, and I just have him well schooled and hopefully he'll give a good account. But I'd say what you want is probably my best chance in each division of the maiden hurdle. Great stuff. And then the, the grade two novice hurdle, you ride there, the little yak. Looks a, a tough race, this. There's some nice types in it. Eric's Blood Axe, who, who was a nice winner last time. Yeah, Eric Blood Axe won nicely the last day in Nace. And, you know, he won eight lengths, beat a 33 to one shot that day. But you can't take it away from what he what he done on, on the day. Had some decent bumper form to his name, missed a bit of time and came back. Uh, the one I think that might give us all the most to think about is Ginto uh, for Gordon Elliott. He won a maiden hurdle in Navan early in November. Very easily fine, big horse. Uh, cost a lot of money uh, after winning his point to points. Got beat the first day, but has really stepped it up a gear since then. And I think he's the one we're all going to have to really go for the beat. Uh, Mr. Fred Rogers there for Gordon Elliott as well. Dennis O'Regan writes him. Had won in Punchestown early November also, but you know, I think Ginto is the one we're, we're going to have to get after. And then on to, to race for the handicap hurdle. This is 
one I'm really interested in asking you about. Burning Victory obviously won the Triumph Hurdle, was second to Buzz in the Sourwich on the flat recently. And obviously we've seen Buzz had a good start to the season over hurdles. So I imagine this will be a, a nice ride for you. Yeah, definitely. You know, I suppose uh, Burning Victory, the story of her life has been her jumping issues. Uh, I won as a juvenile a grade two on her first run over hurdles and she broke every hurdle that day around Fairy House and went on to win easily, still followed that up with what was going to be second and very fortunately won the triumph hurdle, but you can't take it away from her. She went and done it, missed a bit of time, came back in Punchestown, the mayor's hurdle last year, probably brushed up from that and still had a very good run in Galway and the Galway hurdle only six lengths behind Saldier that day and over then to Newmarket and as you say that was an excellent run behind Buzz I think stepping up to three miles here is really going to leave her in her comfort zone where jumping won't be put under too much pressure I think off a of mark of 143 there's a bit she can work with here 11 stone 9 it's plenty of weight, but, you know, she's a fine, strong mare. And I, I think she's still well handicapped uh, and the trip is going to ease her jump. And I, I really think this one's a good chance. Excellent stuff. I look forward to that. And then on to, to race six, the beginner's chase. Keskin Risk, who has his first run for, for Willie Mullins since moving over from Joseph O'Brien. Short bits, but a bit patchy on the form. A little bit patchy, but... You know, you, you get back to his Leopardstown run at Christmas last year and you know, he's 10 lengths behind Appreciated. That's that's a fair, solid run. I think he was non runner at the Dublin Festival with the ground being on the quick side that day and went to Cheltenham and was thereabouts 10 lengths behind Bob Ollinger's. You know, that's, that's quite solid form as well. He's schooled well at home, and I think he's one that, that could make into a very nice novice chaser. Uh, be interesting to see what he does, but these beginner's chases are, are quite competitive this time of the year. I think he, he's got a good chance in it. Ashdale Bob is probably uh, the most likely favourite in the race. He's run quite a good race behind Bob Ollinger, and I rode one in that race for Willie. Um, Name escapes me at the moment. Uh, yeah, I was second to him that day anyway. Uh, Ashdale Bob was probably going to run a good race there, so he probably sets the standard. But Keskin Risk, if he can run to the level he showed in those grade one hurdles last year, clear around the jump, and he's going to be there at the fighting end.